Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to consider uh, a weird thing which seems like a group. Maybe it is a group, maybe it's not. And and the goal is to show, to sort of explore it and figure out whether it's a group. Okay. So I start with considering the real numbers under multiplication, all real numbers, including zero. So the question first is, is this a group? Yeah, is this a group? No. Why not? Zero elements doesn't have any words. Yeah, okay. So how can you fix this? Well, my idea is you just introduce a new element. Okay, so you, you sort of already have R and you add in a new element which is separate from all the things already in R and you call that infinity. And you put in, you have sort of now extend the multiplication. So things which are already, you know how to multiply, things which are already real numbers, you just multiply them as you used to. But now you have to specify how to multiply infinity with any real number. Okay? So the first condition you put is just a condition to make sure that it inverts zero. So zero times infinity is infinity times zero is one. The second condition says the obvious thing that infinity times anything other than zero is just infinity. Okay. So this gives you a binary operation, right? Now you know what to do with any, any two inputs, right? So they are both reals and you just multiply them. Usually if one of them is infinity, it will be in either of these. It also includes the case infinity times infinity. Okay. So, so is this a group? Yeah. What? You checked all the conditions so quickly? Yeah, it's associative. Okay. Good. And uh, I only use one. And everything has an inverse. Okay. So, seems like a group. Okay, good. Now let's try to understand the behavior of this group and why I said it's it's a weird group. Okay. So. Okay, now, you recall that in any group, you have a property called cancellation. Well, maybe you haven't seen this. Maybe some of our online audience haven't seen this. But I'll tell you something interesting. In any group, you have this property. AB equals AC implies B equals C. Hmm? Okay, this is called cancellation and we'll see this later if you haven't seen it so far. It's basically you multiply both sides on the left by A inverse, then you use associativity, cancel A inverse A from both sides, that's identity on both sides, then you get B equals C. Okay, this is called cancellation. Okay, now, so since this is a group, it should be cancellated, right? Right? Okay. Now let's take. So let's look at. A times infinity equals infinity times C. Yeah. So infinity. So A equals infinity. B equals 3 and C equals 5. So what do you get? Well, infinity times 3 is infinity, right? Infinity times 5 is also infinity. So this is true. Right? So we get what? 3 equals 5, right? That's true? No. No. So something went wrong. Well, that's, that's very interesting, right? Maybe we found a contradiction in mathematics. Okay. So uh, let's, let's, let's try to think, think a little more. So, so, so what went wrong? Did the cancellation thing go wrong? 
is this true? Is infinity equal to infinity times 3? So both of these are equal. So this is true. So this part there is no problem. Right? And the cancellation law is definitely true. So what could have gone wrong? Hmm? Don't know. Well, yeah, obviously you don't know, right? But you have to figure out. <laughs> If you already knew, then you won't be talking about this. Okay, so so let's go back to the proof of the cancellation law, maybe, and see like what step of that you get a trouble. Inverse. In infinity has an inverse zero, right? So how do you prove the cancellation? So proof of cancellation law. How does it begin? So you start with a b equals. I'll just write the general proof, then I'll plug in these values and see which step went wrong. Okay, what do you do? We multiply on the left by a inverse. Now you use what? Associativity. Oops, implies. Now what do you do? A inverse A is the identity. Identity. So E B is E C where E is the identity. And then, well, identity means you get B equals C, right? Mm -hmm. But that's the proof. Now, let's just try to write down, or you'll tell me what happens when you try to do the same thing with these actual numerical things. Okay, what do you get? What is infinity inverse? Zero. Zero. I won't put parentheses at the same like this. So far, so good. Let's just check. So these were both infinity. Now these are both one, right? Mm -hmm. Zero times infinity, zero times infinity. Mm -hmm. So okay. seeing is now associated. Okay, now what should and you have to tell me? I'm not telling you anything, I'm just shooting. So now this step. Is this correct? Zero infinity is what? One. One times three is mm -hmm. three. What's this side? times 5 is 5. Hmm. Whereas here both sides were 1. Now one side became 3, the other side became 5. So, so not only did they, they both change. I mean, if this implication were correct, then then both these should have remained 1. But now this became 3 and this became 5. Mm -hmm. So what went wrong? Associativity. So this is wrong because associativity. So I want to change something up there. What needs to be fixed up here? It's not a good. So what what exactly fails with respect to associativity? Well, the associativity is true most of the time, but it's not true when you are when you have a zero and an infinity, both in the same triple, right? So if, if two of your three things are zero and infinity, then it's not associative. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. In general. If like you have zero, infinity, and anything other than zero, infinity, or one. So if you have zero, infinity, and three, for example, it's not associative. Now, could you have seen even before trying this construction that it's not possible? So now what I want to claim is something stronger. I'll claim that it's not possible to actually make, have a group under multiplication which contains this. So there's no way you can extend a, to a group under multiplication. You see that? Well, so now in addition to this infinity not being cancelable, you also have zero not being cancelable, right? So you also have, you could have done I mean, I did it with infinity, but you could also have done it with zero, right? The same kind of contradiction. Right? Mm -hmm. Which means that in the real under multiplication, even before you add infinity, you have failure of cancellation. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have something where cancellation doesn't hold, 
if you have a, well, this is actually a monoic. If you're not familiar with it, it just means you don't have inverse in general. But the point is, if you have something where cancellation doesn't hold, you cannot put it inside a group. Mm. Right? Because if you put it inside a group, then in the big group cancellation holds, which means it should also hold in the, in the smaller thing we started with. Mm. So what, what am I trying to say? R under multiplication cannot be a group. Well, not just it cannot be a group. It cannot be put inside a big a group. Uh -huh. So it's not just that it's not itself a group, but it's really that since zero is not cancellative, uh -huh. since the element zero is not cancellative, this structure under multiplication cannot be put inside a group. So, so not just is it not a group. It's it's like there's no way of fixing the problem. There's no way of fixing the problem of zero not being invertible because it's not cancellative, uh -huh. right? Because this doesn't hold, zero cannot be inverted. Because whatever inverse you try to pick for zero, you'll run into this type of problem. So this cannot. Well, for those of you who've seen the term monoids, I'll just say it as a submonoid of a group. What I mean is it can be put inside a group where it inherits that operation of the group. Right? So there's no way of fixing this problem because cancellation doesn't hold, you cannot invert it even in a bigger thing. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay.